All right, good, good morning, everyone. You caught me. Uh, I was chatting with Carol, and we were talking about a uh, little bit of business that we're a little bit of something that we're planning for our YouTube subscribers. So if you're not subscribed, subscribe, 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 please, and encourage other people to subscribe as well because. We're gearing up for another competition, uh, and we we were just nattering about it just before we came on live. And uh, my lovely assistant, who is sitting to the right of me, told me I've got to be quiet now because <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> otherwise I'd be late for YouTube. Blah 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 blah. Right now then, all right. Good morning. So as usual, I'd like to say good morning and hello to my spirit guy Gregor, who is standing right here with his hand. Not on my shoulder this morning, but he's there. He's standing there and he's probably, you know, thinking that I need to shut up and get on with things. So that's what I will do. So to my far right, I have uh, my assistant, my lovely assistant, Carolyn. Say good morning, Carolyn. Good morning, Carolyn. See, she does it every time. What would we do without her? And uh, so to all of you out there who are watching, who are listening, we hope it's a good morning to you too. Our subject is... Um, what is it? Mediumship. Our subject is, you know, mediumship in the olden days. Would that be when I was, <laughs> when I was a youngster? No, uh, not quite at all. So mediumship, let's say pre the Second World War, was very, very different than mediumship. And in fact, mediumship when I began was very different than it is now. Um, so we're going to talk about those differences and we're going to talk about you know how mediums used to work years ago as opposed to how they work today so um before we go into questions i know we've got people uh, I, some of you were waiting already I, I i apologize if i was slightly late but uh, anyway so what we'll talk about before we start to do questions a little bit before we start to do questions is I'm going to just throw this out there to you to sort of give you a little bit of food for thought. All right. So years and years and years ago, let's say pre-war, pre the pre the first and second world wars, uh, because mediumship has been going for officially the, um, the Spiritualist Association of Great Britain uh, has I don't know how many years, it's got to be 120 years. It celebrated its 100th year um, quite a while ago. So I'm not quite sure exactly how long, but well over 100 years. So we can go back, you know, to even pre the First World War and then certainly through the Second World War. Mediumship during wars and strife and all of that, mediumship seems to rise. It seems to rise up and become much more popular. People want to know more people. You know, people are more anxious. Uh, and so, you know, mediumship in England certainly was rife in those days. Now, in those days also, there were what we call physical mediumship. Physical mediumship is when a medium can literally uh, produce apports, from the spirit world. Does anybody know what an apport is? I'm going to throw that out. That might, that should have been one of our, our quiz questions. I'm going to throw that out and see if anybody knows. No cheating and looking it up in Google, please. No cheating and looking it up, you know, just, you know, doing it that way. All right, what is an apport? P mediums years ago used to create or be able to pull apports from the spirit world. They would um, be able to move objects they would be able to buy using um, they called it a, a planchette or a, it was like a a, a, a tape it was like a table with uh, with different symbols on it or they'd use the Ouija board or they would um, literally be able to create we're going to talk about more how they created they'd create it like a trumpet or you could actually buy trumpets. Even when I began as a medium years ago, not not pre-war, but um, when I began, you you could easily acquire what they called a trumpet. And a trumpet was like a large, sort of long cone-shaped thing, narrow at one end and wide at the other. And the idea was that you were able to get the the spirits, you know, people who know me know I don't believe in spirits or ghosts, but you'd be able to get someone from the spirit world 
using their voice and their voice would be able to come through the trumpet and echo through out you know out of the trumpet so that it would be physically heard by those of us who were not in the spirit world so there were all these things that physical mediums used to use in order to create a physical manifestation of something that was not of this physical world so we had physical mediumship and um, you don't hear of that anymore I mean it's just it's that's old hat and nobody does that anymore I, I wonder sometimes if it's because nobody can do it anymore or if they did it how real actually was that was that really real that there was physical mediumship could that actually happen I believe it did happen I believe there are a lot of fakes of course physical mediumship literally opens itself up to people you know doing all sorts of weird and wonderful things like magic and the magicians can pull rabbits out of hats and so on and so forth maybe that's why physical mediumship is no longer in fashion because it's so easy to fake it um, but mediums had a different way of working years ago very often if you went to see a medium they would at least 90 percent of the time go into trance and they would talk to you in this trance state or they would everybody would be sitting around a table in a dark room with a little light on and and they'd all be sitting there holding hands and then you know the, the well-known phrase is there anybody there sometimes when i'm in with audiences and i do it with big audiences it's a lot of fun i get everybody to hold hands and then i get them all to say is there anybody there and we have a lot of fun with that because then i'll say probably not uh but we have a lot of fun and you know as you know me as you get to know me those of you who know me well and those of you who don't know me so well you can see that i like having fun because this is a really fun 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 subject it's also a very serious subject i get that i understand that but you know i'm the kind of person i've got a great wicked sense of humor uh, a very you know odd sense of humor carolyn you'll vouch for that won't you she's raising she's, ra she's raising her eyebrows up into her hairline yeah <laughs> she's very british she says very british which of course i am so we had physical mediumship that we don't see so much anymore although i personally have done some things that you might say uh, are you know similar to or even you might uh, put them into the category of physical mediumship um and um why do why don't we do that anymore as i've said it sort of lends itself to people being fake and all the rest of it so mediumship today has changed tremendously tremendously to how it used to be all those years ago all those years ago we sat in dark rooms we held hands we you know we there, there was a lot of reverence with mediumship uh, that you don't necessarily see today um, and it was it was uh, it was encouraged by mediums to be a mystery. Um, I'm not of that ilk at all because I think that this is yes, it's an amazing mystery. It's a mystery all in itself. You don't have to create any more mystery than there already is. So when you come to my house, we don't sit in dark rooms. We do not hold hands and say, "Is there anybody there?" I might say to myself quietly, or not actually to myself but those in the spirit world I you know anybody there are you going to talk to me but I try to dispel the mystery as much as I can because I think it's a fascinating subject that more and more people are wanting to know about and I think it's a subject that we can understand better if we talk about it openly and take that take that mystery away just let's take the mystery away and you know so that's what we do on Thursday mornings we try to take the mystery away all right so I'm going to go to Carol and we're going to come back and have a couple of stories here and there and so on and so forth as we do every Thursday morning. I feel I've, I'm sort of, I forgot to move the angel on my shoulder. Can you see? No, your, your head is there. actually blocking him perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> All right then, because I feel as if I've got something on my shoulder, which apart from Gregor, who is not. I remember years ago, I remember saying to a woman, I was actually in a pub and the landlady uh sort of knew what we'd been we'd all been uh, to one of my events and we all the whole group of us and we came back to the pub and she came up and she looked at me she said oh yeah she said are you that woman then that that woman which of course i'm known throughout the world as that english woman 
yes and I'm happy for it too and she said are you that woman then are you that woman who's supposed to talk to dead people and I said yes yeah. so she said uh, well she said uh, my husband died can you see him so I said well actually you know I, I do see a man and usually I don't do it so spontaneously mm -hmm. well sometimes I do that's not true that I don't usually do it I have to think about that uh, anyway so I said to her, yeah, I you know, see your husband and I see him on your shoulder. And I meant to say next to your shoulder, but I said, you know, I can see him on your shoulder. And I described him and I gave her his name and all the rest of it. And she looked at me right in the eye and she said, well, yes, my husband's name is so-and-so. And yes, he does look exactly like that. So I think you see him. But just so as you know, he's not a bloody parrot. Ah. <laughs> and they were her exact words. Just so as you know, Chris had said he was sitting on the shoulder, not a bloody parrot. So, uh, I, and we laughed and she laughed and uh, and it, it worked out fine. But anyway, so I don't know, where am I this morning? All over the place. Let's go to Carolyn, shall we? And get some questions. Well, Martha is joining us today. Good morning, Martha. And she's asking, uh, were they having the same results then as you have today with mediumship? Oh, that's a really good question. Um... Yes, if you're referring to me, uh, the same results as me personally, because I'm not speaking for the mediums, and we all know about the cheats and charlatans are out there. I don't, you know, I don't need to go into that. But I would say that uh, I, I think probably, um, although there are were in those days a lot of cheats, a lot of charlatans, and because of what they used to do. Because Definitely because of what they used to do and how they used to do it, it lent itself to, you know, fakes and cheats and, you know, people who were able to do sleight of hand and so on and so forth. So I think there were a lot of fakes out there. In fact, I know there were, and, and a lot of fakes were uncovered, uh, you know, and, um, you know, it became a bit of a witch hunt at one point, certainly in my country you know sort of just pre probably just after the war into the into the um, I'm going to say into the 40s and maybe into even into the 50s it became a bit of a witch hunt because there were a lot of people who were faking but those who were real I'm I have a tendency to believe from my knowledge of things that that those who were real and who, who did have a gift probably had a deeper gift and uh, and uh, e e even a better understanding of uh, of what was going what was going on. Most mediums today do not do trance work. Ninety nine point nine percent of the mediums, and if they do, it's fake. I've, I've watched it. I've seen it. I know it. Having said that, I know there are one or two out there who do. I do. And I can assure you that it's not fake. You have no reason to believe me, but I can assure you that I'm, you know, I'm not fake. But I do trans work. The majority of mediums do not do trans work. I do rescue work. I don't. I have never met another medium. I've met lots of mediums who claim to have done it. I've never met another medium who I believe can do rescue work or has done rescue work. That doesn't mean they're not out there. It just means I've not met them yet. So I'm hopeful for that. Um, I, in my mediumship, I work very differently than most people who call themselves mediums. So it's an odd question because there were still fakes, there were still charlatans, and there were still those people with a little knowledge who appear to be great at what they're doing but they only have a little knowledge, and you know what they say, little knowledge uh, is a dangerous thing. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Wonderful. Go. Uh, we, we've gotten quite a few people asking this. What exactly defines a medium versus a psychic? Well, that's a, a, great, a great question, actually. Um, you know, it's a, it's, I think it's sort of by virtue of popularity, years and years ago I think we might have talked about this on YouTube before but years and years ago we had everybody wanted to be a fortune teller gypsies were fortune tellers and then you know then then people who were not gypsies didn't want necessarily to associate associate themselves with the gypsy way of life I don't understand why because I think it's an incredible way of life personally true true Romany true Romanies are amazing people um, but um, you know but 
all of a sudden the word um what was it clairvoyant came to mind so now all of a sudden everybody was clamoring to be a clairvoyant rather than a fortune teller and then from clairvoyant everybody you know then all of a sudden people people like me uh people like estelle roberts people like um I don't know, I can't think off the top of my head, but people who were, who were mediums, who were true mediums, all of a sudden, and then, of course, we'd go on TV, and then all of a sudden, every, everybody wants to be a medium. A, a clairvoyant, or a, what did you call it? A psychic. psychic. All right, a psychic is someone who can see further than, further than the ordinary vision. They can, you know, they can sometimes see the future. They can sometimes... Um, you know, some people have the ability to uh, have diagnostic skills so they can look at you and tell you if you've got an issue or a problem. I met a wonderful old Chinese guy who was a diagnostician, a uh, psychic diagnostician. I think that's how, uh, he never said that about himself, but that's what he was. So there are people out there who do have these senses and these sensibilities and they use their psychic, if you like, powers or they use their uh, ability to see or to feel or to sense in some way that's very very different it's very very different than what a medium does now medium can do all of those things all of those things that a regular psychic can do so mediums are by virtue of the fact that they are mediums they are psychic but they have this a medium is someone who can truly communicate talk to see hear talk to converse with interact with those in the spirit world that's the a medium is simply that the medium or the conduit between those two worlds which a psychic is not necessarily if you see someone for instance using cards oh or, very good because that's a question is card reading the same as medium no no so who asked that question martha again hello martha good keep keep it coming darling no so someone who reads cards someone who uses psychometry well psychometry is taking an object have we talked about psychometry before Not really. i teach my students psychometry my first year students i teach them psychometry and psychometry is when and you can all do it all of you out there listening you can take an object. Okay, so for instance, if I was to want to do psychometry with Carolyn, Carolyn, we're going to play a little bit, okay. right? If I want to do psychometry with you, of course, I know Carolyn far too well, but there are things about her that I don't know. I would say to her, I want a piece of jewelry, preferably jewelry. I want something, give me something that you wear all the time that is close to your skin. If it's not all the time, it's often. Give me something that you've been handling for the several, you know. Oh, she's, look at that. She's handing me a, look at this, a ring, very pretty ring. So she gives me a ring. And what then I would do, I would say to her, but you didn't wait for my question to end, right? Give me something that has only belonged to you, not to someone else. So if this is an antique, it doesn't work. No. If this was your mother's or your brother's wife's or something or another, it doesn't work. Simply because when I am holding this and I'm everything, everything in this world absorbs energy because this is always on her finger, always, always on. Is it always on your finger? Always. It's always on her finger this piece of jewelry has absorbed Carolyn's energy and so um, anybody you don't have to be a medium the difficulty with a medium well let's put it this way the difficulty with this medium is when I teach my students how to do this and I show them this exercise which is a great exercise and you can all try this make sure that the article that you're using didn't belong to anyone else all right so um, the problem is that this medium cheats because <laughs> I can't help myself. I start to say to Greg, oh, what do you think then? Because <laughs> I'm like, I cheat. I mean, I, because I have this at my fingertips. Yeah, because I can, I do. <laughs> yes, exactly. Whereas my students and those of you listening may not have that same ability to be able to have someone in the spirit world to ask. Um, you know, you what you have to do is you have to focus quite clearly 
on this the object that you have in your hand and as you focus you try to absorb the energy because the energy that's in this ring that that the energy which is Carolyn's that this ring has absorbed can tell you a story it can tell you a story and I'll do just a tiny bit because because I can just because I can all right so with this ring there are tears I don't know if you ever lost this ring or if it was ever broken or something went missing something something sad very sad happened with this ring she's looking at me as if I'm a crazy person you see <laughs> she's not going to say oh yes Rosemary you're right just because we're on no. YouTube and the whole world is watching right so I feel that there are, and, and I think I know what those few little tears are but the sort of things that you can get that, that are absorbed into the energy are a person's emotions. So you can tell by holding something whether a person is sad or whether they're happy. You can tell. So, so when you hold an object like this and you're doing psychometry, you have to ask the question, is this person happy or is this person sad? I'm not going to answer that for all the world to know. So just so she knows, but I'll talk to you about it later. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> um, so is this person sad or is this person happy? Um, sometimes a person who has no mediumship abilities can hold something and immediately feel all kinds of sensations and emotions. So anybody who says to you, give me an article, give me something to hold that's yours, or somebody who says, if you, for instance, you went to somebody and they said, um, you know, you want, to, you want to talk to your mother, and that person said, oh, yeah, you need to bring something that your mother owned. Don't do it. Don't do it. Because they're not necessarily communicating. Well, you can do it. Of course you can do it. You might say don't do it. You can... Um, you can do that, but the person who is using that object is getting their information, which is perfectly good information and can wow you. I mean, some of my students have really wowed me and themselves from the things that you can find from an object and the, and the way the energy absorbs our emotions and our feelings and so on. You can, you can uh, certainly tune into that energy. And so if you give an object that belonged to your mother or your father, whoever it is you want to talk with in the spirit world, that person using that object can tell you so much about perhaps your mother, your father. That does not mean they are communicating with your mother. They are tuning in to the energy that that ring is holding. So there is a difference. You might think it's a fine line. I don't. Because if somebody hands me, something I don't want it because if I can't talk to the person in the spirit world directly then I'm not doing my job I'm not using my mediumship abilities I'm not I'm no longer a conduit between the spirit world and myself and that's so you know so anyone who uses cards and the cut don't misunderstand me because they work cards work really well the tarot works really well there are all these ancient um amazing things that we can use uh that work really really well and you know i've used tarot cards and they're brilliant they're great uh they can tell a lot they can talk about the future you can see people's future i mean one of my little party tricks is I use ice cream. I use chocolate ice cream. So when people come for chocolate ice cream, and, and often people bring it with them because they want me to do it. They'll bring chocolate ice cream with them and a white dish or a white plate. And, you know, it's a bit like reading tea leaves or like reading a beer glass. In England, the beer we have has a, a big, what they call a head on it, and it's all foamy. And as you drink it, all the foam drips down the, the inside of the glass. Well, I tell you, you can read so much from that. If you know what you're doing and you have that ability to sense and to be aware and so on. But I like ice cream because who doesn't like ice cream? And I'll, and I'll have a dinner party. There might be 12 people sitting at the table. We're all eating chocolate ice cream. And all of a sudden, I look around and everybody's pushed their plates towards me because everybody wants me to read their plates. And 
just as a little aside, a very good friend of mine, Mary Lou, uh, she actually has a daughter and a son. And it's so funny because she was always wanting to know, would her daughter have a baby and so on and so forth. Well, she came one day to me with another friend and we sat eating chocolate ice cream and there she handed a plate to me what can you see and there I saw the baby and she took a photograph of this picture because when I showed her it was you literally could see this fetus in this on the plate you could see it it was you know very clear and so she took photographs well the next day she went to say hello to her daughter they you know sat chatting and so on and so forth and Mary Lou said I've got something to show you and she showed her daughter this these photos that she'd taken and told her what I'd said about these things and her daughter said well it's funny that you should say that because I was I've got some news for you and we just found out today today and I would said this yesterday I've just found out today I'm pregnant so yes these things work and you don't have to be a medium and that, it, it would be thrilling for me if people just embrace the talents that they have you don't have to say you're a medium just because you want people to take you seriously there's nothing wrong than saying that you are either simply psychic or that you're clairvoyant or whatever it is that you you know that you can see things or feel things or sense things does not make you a medium. So a medium, let's be clear again, a medium is someone who will communicate directly. A medium is not that person who says, well, if you want to talk to your mother or your daughter or your sister or whoever it is, bring something that belongs to them. A true medium will never say that to you and they will never want anything from you because they are going to, if they're going to do it at all, they're going to talk directly with that person in the spirit world. Good old Dean says to tell you, Rosemary would not be able to read my ice cream as I always lick the bowl clean. <laughs> ah, well, I bet if you were with me, you wouldn't. I, I, I bet you'd leave all those scrapings and all those smears of chocolate ice cream. I bet you would. Oh, very funny. Next we, question. Let's have a... We've got a question from Dan in Connecticut. Hello. He says, you mentioned ectoplasm last week. Can you enlighten us more? What is it? Well, um, ectoplasm, the, the, now I'm, I'm not a scientific person, so uh, so don't, please don't, you know, you've got, you've got to check it out for yourself. All right, so basically, years and years and years ago, it, I've never known any, uh, that doesn't mean it doesn't happen now, it just means I've not heard of it, that's all. And I don't, I'm you know, not all knowing or seeing, I don't hear everything that's going on in the planet. But years ago, it was a very common practice for mediums to use ectoplasm. And um, sometimes they would use ectoplasm to shroud uh, someone from the spirit world. So even if you couldn't see that person, if the ectoplasm went over that person, shrouded that person, you could see that person's form or features or what have you. Uh, sometimes ectoplasm was used to make a trumpets or a voice box. Sometimes ectoplasm would come out of the medium's mouth. I'm going to tell you what it is in a minute. Sometimes it would come out of a medium's mouth in a sort of in a stream like this and form almost like a, a megaphone. Uh, and then the idea was that the person who was communicating through the medium would use that medium's, that, the ectoplasm, and you would hear their voice coming through the megaphone. Now, it sounds too fantastic it sounds it's you know it sounds like it's a crazy idea but i do know and i do believe that that there were people who could do this and the, and there were times when it could it did work but again what what i'm saying to you is this is such an easy thing to fake and if you have any even the most mild sleight of hand skills and tricks you could you know people used to create this sort of thing so it quickly, you know, it just quickly became that thing that people didn't do anymore because, you know, people got nervous of the fact that they were going to be treated as fakes and so on. Ectoplasm is, it has something to do with the cells in our body. So if you imagine you've got a round cell like this and, you know, the wall, so the outside is, is called the wall of the cell and then you've got the center of the cell and we have, I don't know how many trillion or million cells that every single person has in their body all right so i think 
I think there is a substance, and I think it's just inside the wall of the cell. It's almost like the lining, if you like, of the cell. And it is a sort of like a jelly-like substance. I mean, of course, we're talking about, you know, little minute things here, but if you can imagine you blow it up, it's, you know, blow it up and it's that size. The, the wall inside of the cell is lined with this sort of soft jelly-like substance, which is called ectoplasm. And what would happen, uh, the theory is, and I have some knowledge that, it can happen and I have some knowledge that it did used to happen with certain people from time to time how often I'm not I don't know but when a medium went into a trans state into a deep trans state the cells in your body uh, literally are can be let's say transformed and the cell what the, the, the theory is that the ectoplasm that jelly-like substance that is within each and every one of our, the cells in our body would seep or leak through because, because when the medium went into a trans state, I mean, we know that certain things affect the cells in our body. We know that certain vibrations affect the cells in our body. We know that it's possible to affect the cells in our body. We, are, we know perfectly well that energy of a certain type can affect the cells in our body because as a healer I have literally seen miracles I have laid my hands on someone and the tumor that's been there has disappeared overnight uh, I mean we know we could we hear all these stories from all sorts of different people of these small miracles that happen not so small to the people they happen to but they are in retrospect to everything else they're small miracles that happen which regard cell change a little, the little girl who I talked about her a few weeks ago the little girl who couldn't walk with healing with energy and creating energy we were able to literally transform the cell structure that had begun to break down and to disintegrate in this child's leg using healing using energy using faith using all of that good stuff that we have as healers we were able to transform and to build back the cell structure in that little girl's leg so she in fact was able to walk again now these are facts you know you may not believe them and you or you may but they are facts and these things do happen and these things are recorded so when we talk about ectoplasm we talk about the cell structure changing and the ectoplasm leaking out it's not so far-fetched when you see what what else we're able to do when we use energy so mediums would go into a deep trans state and would create within themselves and around themselves with the help of the spirit world they would create this incredible force of energy which would supposedly change the structure of the cells and then the ectoplasm would leak out and it would either come it would come out of uh, you know where, wherever Sometimes it would come out of the palm centers. Sometimes it would come out of the mouth. Sometimes it would come out of the ears, whatever. whatever. But very often it would come out of, because we all have energy points all over our body, the five chakra points most of us know about. And then we have a trillion other little tiny chakra points, two of which lie in the palm centers. And sometimes ectoplasm would leak through those energy sources, that energy, that those tiny pulses of energy that would leak out of the chakra points. And then mediums would be able to use this ectoplasm or the spirit world waiting and wanting to communicate would use that ectoplasm. And it literally comes out, it's like a, a literally like a white, dryish substance but it comes out almost cloud-like, if you like. It's sort of, but there's, there's more of a substance. It's not smoky. It's not, doesn't sort of, it, you can hold it in your hand. You can literally play with it. But it's very fine, almost gossamer fine stuff. Now, the reason that years ago, again, mediums sat in dark rooms. They were, sat in very controlled environments, which is when I go into trance work and when I've done trance work, over many 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 years with my students on uh, more more occasions than I can count um, we make sure that the environment 
is safe and secure that no one can come in or out cell phones are off cell phones are out of course in years ago we didn't have cell phones but even today if I wanted to find were taking a class and there was any possibility of me going into trance then I would make sure that everyone was in the room everyone was let's say locked in the room nobody's allowed to get up everybody in that room has the responsibility of knowing that they hold the well-being of the medium right in the palm of their hands because as a medium goes into trance and the energy starts to change if you're using something like ectoplasm or if you are moving out of your body and in again it has to be a controlled environment because at the end of whatever it is you're doing that ectoplasm has to come right back into your body if it doesn't you're you're dead or certainly you're ill or certainly something you, you're going to create some bad thing that happens to you in a physical sense which is another reason probably why people don't do it anymore because it is dangerous to do disturbing a medium in a trans state waking a medium from a trans state is also dangerous so again you know I can see why most people don't like to do that stuff but I have Grey Eagle and we do it often and uh, you know over the years we've done it more as I've said more times than we can count so these things can happen and do happen but we're talking about mediumship versus you know being psychic or being clairvoyant or clairaudient or whatever it is or, or simply just being using your psychic or spiritual energies to create things is a whole different it's a whole different thing Dean has a, has a little thing to mention. He says, I have a friend who has been working on physical mediumship. She goes into a trance and sometimes several people from the spirit world talk through her and change her voice. Recently, she had an ectoplasm finger manifest on her cheek. And then he says, one of her voices, she says, is not a human. It's a different dimension. Fine. <laughs> Good oh. I don't know what you want me to say there. You know from my face. Here's the thing. This is the worst thing about me. I am without a doubt, without a doubt, the most skeptical person I know. Am I right, Carolyn? Yes. yes. I I'd rather not believe than believe until I have serious and real evidence and I'm going to be very picky about what that evidence is as I hope people are when they come to see me skepticism saves us from believing nonsense skepticism saves us from um, from buying into something I, I mean maybe this lady that you know is really genuine maybe she's genuine But got a vivid imagination. <laughs> Maybe she's. I don't know, Dean. I'm not going. I'm not going there any more than I've already gone there. All right. Well, we have Ricky. Ricky says, "Can wearing particular stones enhance your psychic ability?" Without a doubt. And protect you from evil. For example, wearing emerald. Uh, I don't have my emerald on today, but yes, um, yes. Because here's the thing, you even wearing different colors okay so so if th our thoughts remember our thoughts ricky are the most powerful and the most positive the, the most incredible thing that we have so if we believe it then it is if we truly believe it then it is then it works and i know i have um, some crystals that I, I actually keep them in my bedroom i don't use crystals very often but i believe that that stones uh, crystals, any kind of stone, they anything that comes from nature, from the, the from the earth, a natural thing, ha holds its own energy and it holds its own small amount of power. And com if you combine that with your belief that this will, let's say, ward off evil, or this will uh, give you a certain uh, power or certain energy 
force within you, then combined with the energy that's in that stone, absolutely without a doubt, or combined with the color of the scarf you're wearing. If the color of the scarf reminds you to think red or to think green or to think whatever color you're after, which makes you feel more powerful or helps you to create a better environment around yourself, absolutely, yes, absolutely. But I think stones and anything that comes from the earth or within the earth, anything of that nature certainly has uh, an energy and a power that we can absolutely tap into. We are um, devising, my friend Al and I, we are going to create some, I don't know what you call them actually, online classes, uh, which will be open to anybody uh, there will be a charge it won't be much of a charge but there will be a charge but these will be private classes and in these classes we're going to be talking about and developing ideas like this so you know keep keep posted because um I'm, when i go to new york we're going to sort of we've already started planning it out and when i go to new york we're actually going to probably be finalizing what it is we're going to be doing and with then we'll be offering people places in our in our classes um but um Things like uh, psychometry, for instance, the power of that stone, the power of that gold absorbing your energy, uh, the power of the stones that are in the earth absorbing that earth energy. Um, then, of course, we've got things like power symbols and power animals that don't necessarily give you power, but they remind you of the power that you have within you. So if you... For instance, Rick, if you've got an affinity for for emeralds, it's because you know because something inside of you is telling you that this matches your energy, and you can use this. Not only does it help to give you power because it has its own energy, it helps remind you of the power that you have within you too. So, it's very interesting stuff. Martha has another very interesting question. Um, is mediumship stronger during a full moon or particular <laughs> times of the year, that's like a, Halloween? Yeah that's, a, that's a, yeah, that's an interesting question, Martha. Um, not for me. Uh, for me, I'm always odd all the time. Um, but we know that the moon, I mean, think about it. You know, the energy of the, the moon, the earth, the sun, think about it. You know, the tides change. It's all to do with the moon and the energy of the moon uh, helps the tides. Either they're coming in or they're going out or whatever. Um, the energy of, of the earth creates tidal waves, hurricanes, you name it. There's a lot of energy out there. And naturally, we are naturally... Um, uh, susceptible all of us to the energy that's out there now there are people who believe that there are certain individuals who are affected by the moon and I can tell you from my own personal experience I had a father-in-law who I mean you could you didn't even have to know that the full moon was coming you could you could tell he would be an normal happy person for at least three quarters of the month <laughs> and all of a sudden he would start to get really moody and angry and for no particular reason whatsoever and at some point you know and he was he was he was he was difficult he was a nice guy in his own way but he was difficult and he was awkward at these points in time otherwise really nice but he it was literally he literally changed his whole personality changed and uh, we realized you know sort of sort of looking back that it was always either i think it was the full moon it was always at the full moon of course you know the earth has its energy and there are people who are susceptible to that energy and who are affected greatly in one way or another by that energy i don't know that it makes our psychic abilities stronger or weaker um but certainly you know there are po possibilities I personally am not affected by the moon. Thank goodness I don't have to wait for a full moon before I talk to people in the spirit world. Uh, and I, yeah, I have to look next time. I have to think about that. But I don't think that my abilities are affected by the by the moon, by the earth, by any of that stuff. I just think it's, you know, I, but I, I'm, I, I wouldn't discount that 
that there are people who are affected by the moon, definitely. As I say, my father-in-law was one of those. All right, let's have our... You just want to let everybody know that, yes, somebody was put in timeout for inappropriate comments, and I'm, I apologize. Somebody commented something. Oh. And so they were put in time out. You know, it's apologize. really, you know, to get a get a life. Get just get a life. Get a grip, get a life. You know, get your own life. Stop worrying about other people's lives. Get your own. That's <laughs> you know, so okay. Yep. Okay. Um we had a time out. Yeah. I thought you meant my grandson for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Talking of which? Uh, does black attract negative energy? Because the color of black? No. No, it's the negative energy that is within a person that might draw them to the color black. And certainly then they might feel that they want to wear it more and more. But it's the negative energy within the person who is drawn to negative colors and negative negative actions. I actually wear black a lot and you can't get anyone more positive than me. Mm -hmm. I was talking to my grandson last night about magic. And he wanted to know what magic was. He's four years old. Right? And of course, I totally believe in magic. I brought my daughter up to believe in magic, and we had many tales of magic. So I began to tell him a tale of how, you know, the magic is in the sky and in the clouds, and we have to move the clouds apart to find the magic, etc., etc. I could tell you all the story that I told my grandson yesterday, and he was fascinated, fascinated, and I love talking about magic. Yeah, next question. Um, okay, could you share your views on aliens, as in, um, no, well, no. you don't channel, you don't speak to aliens in your mediumship, is that correct? Oh, me? Yes, you personally, you have never, have you ever spoken to an alien? Because the question just came about. Can I just <laughs> love the way you say alien. <laughs> like, is that supposed to be a spooky voice or something? Was that, what was that? <laughs> what was that? Um, uh, alien referring from, to somebody from another planet, not a spirit. Not that I know. I have never, no, not that I know of. And I'm not an expert on aliens. I'm not an expert on UFOs. Although I believe that there are people who have seen UFOs. Uh, let's be clear. A UFO is not that big spaceship necessarily. A UFO is an unidentified, an unidentified flying object. Uh, I actually saw a flying object this morning in my, my garage, but then I identified it as a huge <laughs> dragonfly. I wonder what earth was flying around my head, but it was a massive dragonfly. Uh, but I don't discount that they exist because, um, you know, that if I discounted the existence of these things, if I discounted the existence of, I mean, it makes perfect sense to me that, you know, we on this earth, if you look out at the universe and the many, many universes that are out there, remember, you know, we're only part of one universe and there are many others out there proven through the telescope and through science. There are many universes that are out there. And so it defies logic, really, to suppose that we're the only living creatures. I mean, it just defies logic. So I'm not saying that there aren't... Well, now the other people, is. or uh, I'm just saying, to my knowledge, to my knowledge, everyone I've spoken to have have been people from this earth. Okay. How about that? That yes. works for me. Yeah. The next question: That would be an alien spirit. Spirit? No, you've never spoken that you know of to an alien's spirit. Right. <laughs> You know, here's another thing. Okay, when you say alien, especially the way you say it, Karen, alien, uh, you imagine this creature with long tentacles out of a Stephen King movie. I love Stephen well, King. Course. I think it's great. <laughs> All right, but an alien simply could be somebody from another planet who is in the same form as us. Mork from Mork. Mm -hmm. That Robin Williams show. Excuse me? Did you ever watch that Robin Williams show back in the day? Mork from Mork. He was an alien. Okay. And they, they started old. Okay, and then the, really? Yeah, and but they look like us. Yes, and then they. Well, there you have it. Opposite. From the 
horse's mouth, <laughs> you have the possibility of. Uh, did, and were they called aliens or just people from another planet? I don't it's know. Just called Mork. I don't but, know. Okay. So anyway, to my knowledge, no, I've never spoken to or seen anything like that. I did. I was once in Arizona many years ago, and a friend of a friend had what they call a dome house. I'm sure it's still there. It's on the edge of um, Phoenix, just outside of Phoenix. Amazing dome house, fabulous, huge thing. So sort of, that looks like an it looks like an alien all of itself in the desert. And at night time, because we were in the desert, you know, there was nothing out there at night. It's sort of pitch black unless there was a full moon, and then you had the light from the moon, etc. But there were definitely things going on out there. Now, of course, there's talk that there are scientists in the mountains there working on all sorts of uh, uh, crazy ideas. Um, you know, but whether that's true or not, whether we actually one night we did see an un unidentifiable flying of we saw something moving in the sky, it was a light, and it seemed to go from one side of the sky to the other. And Phoenix has a big sky, let me tell you. So we stood out there at night time, watched for it. We never did identify it. So, have I ever seen an unidentified flying object? I suppose you could say yes. I'm not sure whether it was from this planet or another. I couldn't tell you, but there we have it. Okay, we've got a couple of people that wrote in that we need to mention. One is Beth. Beth has lost her mother, her brother-in-law, and her father-in-law in the last year and a half, and her 18-year-old daughter in June. Uh, she says she feels like they are all trying to tell her something, but she's not sure what the message is, and she's really in a low point. Well, Beth, I'm so sorry for you know your suffering. I mean, goodness, that that's I'm so sorry that you've had all of that, and particularly uh, I feel for you having lost your daughter because that has to be the very worst thing to lose a child. In my opinion, is the very very worst thing that can happen to anyone. So my heart goes out to you, my darling. Uh, I do believe that they probably, um, I'm asking Gregor now to help me with this, and, and I'm mentioning him because as I'm talking to you, Beth, I do feel his hand on my shoulder. So I know that uh, what I'm saying to you is, is true, and he's confirming my own suspicions that I do believe that they are trying to somehow let you know that, uh, that number one, that they're okay, that they have survived death. I know that your concerns are probably more for your daughter and your mother than for you know for others, but I th I do feel that they are trying to s speak to you uh, in one way or another. But you need to be really careful, Beth, because we've already talked about mentioned. I think I mentioned Ouija boards earlier on and talking to. You know, to, and 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 you know, people trying to get in touch with the spirit world. I've done it myself. I know how intriguing it is. I know how people want to do that, and especially, you know, younger kids can really get hooked on. There are all kinds of machines aside from the uh, the Ouija board. There are lots of other things that people believe can lead them to talking to those in the spirit world. You need to be very careful, all of you out there, because when you start to dabble. And I'm going to use the word dabble. You know, people used to say to me years ago, you should not dabble. Well, I actually don't dabble. I take this very seriously, and this is my life's work. So I'm not a dabbler. I'm well into it. But I do uh, adhere to the theory that you should not. You know, you should be very careful about dabbling because you can literally open the door to stuff or to people in the spirit world. Not everybody in the spirit world is a nice person. Some people are mischievous, some people are downright naughty. So not everybody in the spirit world, you can't trust everyone. So it's like, you know, it's this, I'm going to say it's a, the analogy is, would you literally open the, your front door and say to any passing stranger, come in, come in, oh, come in, sit down, have a seat, you know, make yourself welcome in my home. Um, I mean, you're opening yourself up to being robbed, to being murdered, to being stolen from. You're opening yourself up to all kinds of dangers if you were to do that. Well, the same is true of, you know, opening the door to the spirit world. Be careful. If you, if you want to open the door to the spirit world, go and see someone who knows what they're doing. 
who can help you, who can make sure that anyone who comes into your life from the spirit world is someone who's going to behave themselves, who's somebody who's good, who somebody has your best intentions at heart. I'm sure, Beth, they're all around you. I'm sure they clamor around you often. And I think that the message is very, very clear that they are safe. And Grey Eagle is saying to me, particularly, this is particularly for your daughter or from your daughter, that she is safe and that she's sorry. Um, I hope that helps you a little bit. Shall we have our next question? Yes. Uh, Dorianne asks, how do you predict, predict the gender of a baby? How do you predict it? We're talking of my grandson. Um, you know, I don't... I know it looks sometimes when I'm talking about the future and people say all the time, yeah, but Rosemary, you told me this would happen and you told me that would happen. And Rosemary, you told me this and this and this. Well, guess what? Rosemary told you because somebody told me because mm -hmm. I'm a medium. I told people in the spirit world. So, uh, of course, when my daughter, before my daughter was pregnant, she had to do in vitro because she has all kinds of damaged organs and bits and pieces that don't work properly. So uh, she didn't, wasn't able to get pregnant in the normal scheme of things. And of course it was, we had lots of talk and conversations, but I'd always known, even from the very beginning, uh, from a, her, a very young age, that she one day would be a mother. And I also knew that it would be a little boy. How did I know? Well, I just, I suppose I just knew. But then as I got older and, and then I was able to talk to Grey Eagle and then I was, my father died and I was able to talk to my father and all the rest of it, they told me. So how do I predict? It's because someone in this, because I'm talking to someone in the spirit world and they tell me. As far as I was concerned, I was able to tell my daughter over and over again because she got very depressed and very distressed about the fact that you know no babies were coming and all the rest of it and I was able to assure her and reassure her all the time she would have a baby I told her it was a little boy uh, even if just before she started with the in vitro I saw actually saw uh, a little baby uh, sitting on her knee one day I walked into her apartment and there he was sitting on a knee of course she had no knowledge that he was sitting on a knee she couldn't see him but I could see him clearly uh, so I knew he was coming and I knew it was coming very soon. Um, the day before she went to find out the sex of the baby, she said to me, I want you to tell me. And I said, but you'll find out tomorrow because I make it a rule generally never to tell the sex of a baby. So I knew, you know, you'll find out tomorrow. No, I want you to tell me, mom. I want you to tell me. So I told her, she said, just like you. Well, how do you know? Well, because your grandpa told me and mm -hmm. Ray Eagle told me and, the spirit world is celebrating, and anyway, he he's here. He's already he's already here and with us, even though he's not out yet. He's not popped out yet. So you've got the inside scoop. I do have the inside scoop. That's you know. So when everybody says Rosemary told me this and Rosemary told me that, yeah, everybody thinks Rosemary's wonderful. But the real truth is, I have to admit, Rosemary knows nothing unless I'm told by someone in the spirit world or by Grey Eagle. So let's get that clear. And that's the difference, another difference between a medium and a psychic. Okay. Last uh, question of the day. Oh boy, is it that time? Yes, it is. Okay. This comes from a grandmother. Uh, she says, her grandson just lost a friend in a car accident today. He is very upset. What is his lesson to learn in all this since he already has a drug issue and I worry about him? Thank you with love and light. Oh, and love and light to you too. That's how I sign all of my letters with love and light. All right. So, um, I'm, first of all, I'm so sorry for the loss of this young man. I'm so sorry for your son. Grandson. I'm, grandson. I'm, that's right. I've gone from one grandmother to another, so I'm sorry. And your grandson is obviously struggling with life's issues, if he's struggling with drugs and all the rest of it. So the the life's lesson is very clear here, right? That life is short, stop wasting it. And if he's into drugs or whatever else he's into, you know, the the, the lesson is very clear here to, you know, stop wasting your life. And 
you know, if he wants to grieve and he wants to um, do something for his friend, uh, tell him the best thing. And Gray Hill is putting his hand on my shoulder. So this is a message from him to, from his friend to him, quite clearly. Gray Hill is squeezing my shoulder, quite clearly saying, you want to do something to honor your friend's life? You want to do something to honor your friendship? Get a grip. Get on with your life. Make your life valuable because this young man does not have the opportunity to make his life valuable on this earth plane any longer. So that's the message from that young man to his friend, your grandson. Make your life count. Stop wasting it. All right. So uh, I think that's, you know, again, so sorry that this has happened to you. and and uh, But I think it, we end on a positive note there because for everyone who's out there who is idly sitting twiddling their thumbs or wasting their life in any way come on life is life is so short it can end in a heartbeat i had a used to give my students a lesson and i'm going to give you i'm going to throw this all out to you what if you knew that the end of the world was coming tomorrow Nine o'clock tomorrow morning. This is not a prediction, folks. Don't get scared. Don't get worried. But what if, just what if, those, you know, Donald Trump forces those people into pressing the button or he presses the button himself. <laughs> what if one politician is stupid enough or arrogant enough to set off another war and it happens tomorrow and a bomb goes off or what have you? You never know when the end is coming for you. What if this were your last day on earth? What if tomorrow morning at nine o'clock you were gone? You didn't have another opportunity to tell your loved ones you love them. You didn't have another opportunity to make that cake you've been dying to make. Or what if you didn't have another opportunity to talk to a friend you haven't talked to in a long time? What if today were your last day? What would you do with it? And then when you think about what you do with it, then please go out and do it. Just go out and do what you want to do live your life to the full because this life of ours was given to us and it's very precious all right so we shall see you again next week i'm not sure what the subject is i think we'll continue with mediumship i think a little bit more so any more questions please fire away at us because we're ready and willing to answer in the meantime, you can find us on Facebook, you can find us on YouTube, you can find us on Twitter, you can find us Meetup, you can find us all over the place. We're everywhere. Soon you'll be able to find us on Instagram. If my daughter has her own way, which I'm dreading, you might be able to find us on Instagram. All right, so uh, do we need to take any more, Carolyn? I don't believe Is so. That you got it. the YouTube, you got the meetup, you got the Facebook. And, and if you would like to write to us, if you'd like a consultation with us, uh, please subscribe to YouTube. We're getting so many subscriptions now, which is great. But please, please encourage other people to subscribe because when the competitions do start coming in, we're going to definitely have an, at least one this year if we can get around to getting on with it then uh, you have to be a subscriber to join in with the competition. So subscribe to this channel. All right. And the more people subscribe, the more we're able to do with this channel. So in the meantime, until next week, um, where else can they find us? That's it. Email us, rosemary at rosemaryaltair.com if you want to tell us anything, want to share anything with us, if you want to ask a question but you can't do live. Email us rosemary at rosemaryamateo.com. And in the meantime, she's got a little finger on the button any minute now. She's going to click off. Please, 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 please have a very, very blessed day.